Hi, welcome to Actual LOL, I'm John Perkis. In this video, I'm gonna talk about my top 10 party games of 2017. It was an absolutely incredible year for party games and I love party games. I'm sure you know that if you've ever watched my channel before. And so I've played probably almost all the ones that came out and these are my absolute favorites. There are a lot more good ones that I had to miss off. This video wouldn't exist without the support of my Patreon backers. If you'd like to help Actual LOL grow bigger and better, go to patreon.com forward slash Actual LOL. And all the games that I mention in this video are in the description below. And number 10 is Scribble Time. This is a silly drawing game where you're trying to draw 20 things in about 20 seconds. So you're not really drawing them, you're scribbling them as fast as you can. One person is gonna be reading out from a list of words, really obvious things like envelope, tiger, castle, whatever, and you just have to quickly make a note of them because they're doing it as fast as they like, but really about one every second. They don't really want you to remember them. And it's amazing how you'll just draw these things and then what they have to do is say, uh, John, what was number 12? And you're looking at this thing that you just drew seconds ago and you have no idea what it is. And so some of it's memory, but it's just incredible how you can have drawn it and you, you just heard the word, but you've completely forgotten. And so every little box is just these terrible squiggles or lines or, and what can happen is if you spend too long drawing something, you'll forget they've read out something else and then you have to jump ahead, but you don't know how far to jump ahead. And then all of your drawings are in the wrong numbered boxes and that completely ruins you. It, it's a game that creates so much laughter. It's not even really a drawing game. I, I like that it's it's different. It's kind of memory and guessing and, and being efficient with what you draw. Um, it's, it's really simple. I think the production value of it was a little bit cheap. It comes with a bell and I like that you if you get your answer wrong, other people can jump in because they know it instead. That's, that's really nice. It has a drawing on the back of the grid so that it kind of makes it harder to see your drawings. And some people hate that, but I think they've probably done it on purpose to make it even trickier. So that's kind of clever. It's, it's such a neat, simple game in a tiny box. And uh, I think it just creates a lot of laughter, that scribble time. And number nine is The Chameleon. This was a game that I loved at Essen from 2016 called Gooseberry. And now Big Potato have taken it and they've, they've made it into a proper nice box. And it's got really nice artwork on the box cover. And this is a hidden traitor game, a bit like Fake Artist Goes to New York or Spyfall, where one person is the chameleon and they don't know what the word is. There's a grid of words in the center, so it might be authors, and the author is Stephen King, let's say, but there's, there's 20 other authors on there. Everyone has to come up with a word to say that they know what it is. And you go around in a circle each saying your thing. So somebody might say it and somebody might say horror and, and you go around. But the chameleon has no idea which one it is. So they're trying to hide in plain sight. They're trying to give a clue that doesn't give themselves away. And how can they do that when they know nothing about which one it is? It's, so it's got a really interesting challenge like that. And then there's some bluffing to it because you don't want to give too much away. And if the other players give away too much, if they just say really obvious Stephen King things, then the chameleon will win the game by just guessing Stephen King at the end of it. So I really, really like that to it. Um, it plays in like three minutes. You can really go and go again. And I think this is a great game for people that play with the same group all the same time because you'll really start to get deeper and deeper into it because you have to be so subtle with your clues. And if you play it once, yeah. People will be sort of fairly subtle, but if you keep playing and playing, you're gonna to have to get really clever with the things that you say, so not to give it away to the chameleon. And number eight is Truth Bombs, which is also from Big Potato. And this is designed from the mega YouTubers, Dan and Phil, who I don't really know that well, other than that they are huge. So I wasn't expecting a whole lot since they're not normal game designers, but this one had a really interesting take on it. And so I tried it out and I've really loved it. It's um, a game about telling, writing truth bombs about your friends. So you're writing things about the people in your group and it, it gives you the right amount of inspiration. So you've got a bit of paper, it's got a friend's name written on the top of it and it's color coded. And then in the center, there are a bunch of questions that are also color coded. So I might write about one of my friends, what would their superhero name be? Um, and so I would write that in the right box and then pass it to my left. The next person can't then answer the same question, but they can answer one of the other questions about them. So then at the end of the round, 
you each read out uh, the the list of truth bombs about one of the other players and then they have to pick their favorite and also guess who wrote it and it's just a game that creates laughter it's a game that works brilliantly with friends that you know really well and, and your partner and things like that because you're making jokes about each other you're teasing each other but you're doing it in not too mean a way i don't find that any of the questions in this game are, are asking you to be mean or um or, or like really attack anyone. It's it's kind of silly stuff. And I would say that some of the questions are a lot better than others, but you can be selective. My only um, thing with it would be that there's just not enough questions. I would just want loads and loads and loads to um, give the game loads of replayability. But it it just, it works so well with that right group of friends and, it, and uh, we just wanted to immediately play it again. And um, uh, I just, I love that type of game that involves you, uh, that it's not just about kind of writing funny answers, it's about kind of creating private jokes in the way that when you play something like Monica's you remember those instances again or those clues and that comes back around next time and Truth Bombs is exactly that kind of game. I think it's a really interesting different party game. I don't really have another game like it out there. I've got a lot of games where you write on bits of paper and you try and be funny, but nothing that plays on the other people that you're playing with. And I think it does it in a, a really clever way and it's kind of a nice small box as well. Um, so yeah, that a real surprise hit for me. That's Truth Bombs. And number seven is Debatable. This is quite a small game that was on Kickstarter. I think it was a first time publisher. And I was just drawn to it because it had a really simple idea that I hadn't seen before and it really works. You are debating each other. You take it in turns to debate an issue. Uh, it, it can be something silly like um, should you be allowed to pee in the shower or uh, some of the things are a little more serious like does climate change, is it real for example. One person is the moderator and they decide who is going to debate to um, yes and who is going to debate no. So you don't get to decide necessarily which side you're on. You often will have to debate things that you don't believe in. And then the real great thing about the game is that you get forced to do certain things as part of your argument. So there's loads of cards with loads of different suggestions on them. You pick up two of them and so it will say things like you have to use musical references in your debate or you have to um, tell stories about how you're abducted by aliens or you have to speak in a high-pitched voice and and I can't tell you how much laughter this game has created for us. It, the, those cards are what make the game. The, the debating is fun for sure and it can be a little bit hard to kind of combine both. You're, you're trying to make a point about your the subject matter but then you're also trying to tell your stories about being abducted by aliens. But it's, it's a game that really it really provokes that kind of improv, the, the little bit of acting that you might get in Snake Oil and things like that, but in kind of a natural way. And um, when no, no one was that we've played with so far was kind of scared of it. And it just, it's just hysterical. It's, it, it's this tiny little box. It's very unassuming. The artwork is a little bit simple, but it just works as a game. And so I would really try and look this one out. Um, uh, hopefully it might get picked up by a bigger publisher or something because it's a, it's a really different party game um, that, yeah, just works. That's debatable. And number six is Where Words. This is 20 Questions, the Hidden Traitor game. It's very similar to a game from Essen last year called Insider, or actually the year before. Where Words is really an advancement of that idea and I much prefer it ultimately because in this one, one person knows what the word is Everyone else is effectively trying to ask questions, yes or no questions, to find out what it is and then guess what it is. Um, but one person knows what it is and they're trying to throw everyone else off. They're the werewolf, so they want everyone to get the wrong answer. So they're asking particularly difficult questions or annoying questions. And then one person knows what it is and they're trying to help everyone else, but they don't want to give away that they know what it is because then the werewolf might kill them. They're the seer. And there's a couple of other roles that you can throw in, but really the joy of it is, is just that when you get those hidden roles of trying to guide people in a certain way with your questions, and the person who knows the word that is ask, answering the questions is, uh, can sometimes be the werewolf as well, and they can answer questions incorrectly, 
and then the other players have to then decide whether they thought that they were the werewolf or not. Oh, that's that in itself is really fun. And when you answer questions, you have um, you answer with tokens rather than saying out loud. So whilst there is bluffing to it, it's not really hard a, a, as that player because it's just yes or no. Um, and uh, you can also say maybe and things like that. It, every round plays in like four minutes. So you just go and go again. And it uses an app which suggests the words. So it's just ultimately replayable. And, uh, but also helps you do the kind of opening your eyes and the looking at stuff. And, and that works really nicely as well. So it's a nice little package um, and just a, a nice different party game that I would really kind of recommend to anyone that likes party games. That's where words. And number five is Wits and Wages Vegas. Wits and Wages is a great classic party game, trivia game, where you are betting on answers. So for example, you have um, how many, what percentage of women in the US have tattoos? And everyone, nobody knows the answer to that, of course. So everyone then guesses, every answer is a number. And so you write 25% and you put it in the middle Everyone else has written different percentages, you line them up and then you bet on the answers. So you might think that someone else might know it more than you do and you put some poker chips on that and if you win and you can spread between two different bets and if you win you get more money back and so it's got this great gambling feel to it. Wits and Wages Vegas just takes it up a level. It, it's effectively a play mat, this really nice like mouse mat type material but it adds in a couple of extra things to the game um, to make the game more interesting. So when you hear a question before anyone writes any answers, you can bet that someone will know the answer or you can bet that you will know the answer or at least be closest. So that's really cool. And it's like a 10 to one payout. So it's really, really, um, it's generally quite unlikely. I've never actually seen anyone pull it off yet, but you would really get rewarded for it. And then there's also the ability to bet on black or red and you get a less good payout for that. But basically black is kind of lower than the middle number and red is higher or the other way around. And so that allows you to hedge your bets. You don't really have any idea and maybe the answers are quite close together, but you can you can still make some money back. So that's really nice. It it just, it makes the game that bit more interesting. It's not necessarily a must have for everyone, but for me it is. I love having that play mat, it's just way more visual. I love those little things that it adds to the game and it, it creates more of an experience and Wits of Wages really is an experience game and so Vegas just takes it up a notch. And number four is Crosstalk. This was in my top 10 Christmas couch games. This is a guessing game where you're playing on teams and it's similar to the game Password, if you know that. There's one word that both teams are trying to get their other teammates to guess. So I might be a clue giver, another person's a clue giver. We both know the same word and we're racing to get our teammates to guess it first. But when I give a clue, the other team, their, their people, their guesses get to guess. It's not until then the other person gives a clue on the other team that my team gets to guess. So if I give a clue, I can't give away too much because they'll just immediately get it. Um, we also have a secret clue that we can give on a whiteboard um, so that you can give a context to the clues you're giving. Be quite cagey with what you're doing. And then there's an advanced version which allows you to really give coded messages. And so you're saying things out loud that everyone can hear, but it's about how you use them together, how you combine them to then get the right answer. It's got a real thinkiness to it and you can get better at the game as you play it. I just really, really like this one as a party game with four players, six players, eight players. And I love team games as it is. I think this one is a nice alternative to code names. It's a bit pacier, it's a bit more interesting. Um, I love the discussion with your teammates. It's, it's just a really great game. I think everyone should try if you like that kind of thing. Um, it's got some clever twists and uh, I think it's a classic really. Um, and that's Crosstalk. And number three is Muse. This is a game that came out at Essen and it's a game that has wonderful Dixit style art cards in. If you've played Dixit or Mysterium, you know that these big cards with surreal art, just incredible illustrations. And this is a game where you have to try and get your teammates to guess one of those cards from a selection of six. So the other team have picked a card that you have to try and describe. They also have picked a way that you have to describe it. So you might have to name a famous building or name an animal or name a vehicle or you might have to do a shape with your body or hum a tune. 
And I really like that because it creates creative different ways to create, uh, to give across a clue. And it makes it a different challenge every time you play. There's like 30 of these different challenges. And it means that Muse is never the same. It works so simply and brilliantly. The other team will get the point if you don't get it right. And you have that discussion that is great in like code names where you're having to keep really quiet and your teammates are saying, well, I think it could be this one because he said this and it could be that one. And you're just infuriated at them not getting the right answer. Honestly, this game for me is so much better than Dixit. Um, Dixit was a game that I liked a bit, ultimately got rid of. Um, because it just, the way it worked didn't quite work for me. I like the idea of describing things, I love the artwork, but I never liked the way that you had to get somebody to get it, but not everyone. But with Muse, it's such a simple, slick system that's different with each different type of clue you have to give. I love that it, it forces you to do that because it also makes it easier for newbies because in Dixit you can say anything and that can be quite paralyzing. In Muse, you're told what to do and that's great. And then I love that you're playing on teams, that it isn't, you're not just trying to get the most points, you're playing with people and I just really love team party games. It's also a really small box. I think that Muse should be in everyone's collection over Dixit. I, I can't wait to see expansions with more challenges. I think that Muse is one of the best party games around. I would recommend it to anyone that even remotely likes the sound of it because party games should be in small boxes so that you can take them around to other people's houses. And it packs so much into that box. I just think I'll be playing this one for years to come and uh, it re completely replaces Dixit as far as I'm concerned. That's Muse. And number two is When I Dream. And if you've watched this channel before, you'll know that I absolutely love this game. It first came out at Essen 2016, but this last Essen, it came out properly, a big reprint, and now it's available to everyone all around the world. And it's just amazing. It's such a unique party game. One person is wearing a blindfold in a round, everyone else is trying to get them to guess a certain word, and they're doing that by taking it in turns to say other words. Except that some people are trying to throw them off, they don't want to, them to guess the word at all. And then another player is also trying to create a balance between guessing some right and some wrong, and it just creates such a funny thing where you're, you can often struggle to say the words you want to say, especially if you're trying to throw them off. The person in the blindfold is completely clueless um, and they'll often guess the wrong thing and it just has a really interesting challenge to it, trying to quickly come up with clues, the right clues. And what's so great about the reprint is it's got so many more cards in the original game because you could get through cards quite quickly in the old game. This one is like double the cards but they're also double sided so there's just loads more options. It comes with this nice plastic bed that you can keep the cards in. It's a little bit excessively big for the type of game it is um, but the artwork is really really nice. If you like party games at all you should absolutely try When I Dream. You should probably own When I Dream. For me it's in my top five party games of all time. It's a classic. It's going to be around for years. It's, it's just brilliant. That's when I dream. And number one is Word Slam. And it goes without saying that after raving about the last few games on this list, I love this game. This is another word guessing game. There's a lot of those around this year, but it has an interesting twist. And you're playing on teams. You're trying to get your teammates to guess the same word or phrase as the other team. And you're racing to do it as fast as you can. And you're doing it by using word cards. They're quite simple adjectives and nouns and things like that. And you're putting them up on a card rack so that only your team can see the words that you're picking. And you might be trying to describe a film or a celebrity or something. And this you can make the game really, really interesting and difficult because the words that you have are quite limited. Things like blue and big and old and stuff like that. And if you're trying to then describe Pirates of the Caribbean, it can get really tricky or Johnny Depp is even harder. You're racing to get these words out and your teammates are shouting things out, but then the other team can hear what they're shouting. So that's helping them. Of course, they've got a completely different take on it. And that is what I also love about the game is that I will have a very different way of describing with quite limited words, uh, this thing as uh, uh, compared to my rival. Um, and that's always really interesting at the end of it to see what succeeded and what didn't. 
I love the pace of this game. It's so much more exciting than code names or crosstalk as you're you're desperately trying to get those cards out and they're desperately trying to shout it before the other team. I really like you being pit together like that in real time. And I think it's so simple as well. It it would work for any family. It'd be a great game to play at Christmas. I'm so glad to have this one in my collection. And uh, yeah, it's another classic party game really. That's Word Slam. Those are my top 10 party games of 2017. There are links to where you can buy all of them in the description below. And wow, it has been an incredible year for party games. Probably the best year on record. When you consider that Crosstalk, Muse, When I Dream and Word Slam are all out in the same year and they are all incredible. Like they, they are the top of their game. And, uh, and then the other games in this list, these are all games that are gonna be staying in my collection for a long time. These are games that I've really laughed and had a lot of fun with. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know if I can keep up. If they keep coming out with uh, party games this good next year, it's you're gonna have to start making difficult decisions, but um, I'm really looking forward to trying the ones that do come out. This video wouldn't exist without the support of my Patreon backers. If you'd like to help Actual Lowell grow bigger and better, go to patreon.com forward slash actual Thanks for watching, I'm John Perkis.